Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I've had a number of questions from viewers about armatures. Are they worth taking apart for the copper inside? Do I take apart all of them? If not, which ones do I take apart? Uh, what are my tips and tricks to open them quickly and effectively? So I'm going to answer those questions today. I do have an experiment behind me here whereby I have taken apart 11 pounds of armature. I've separated the copper from the tin. Going to weigh it out separately to see what kind of profit I made from the copper, if any, if it was worth my time, uh, and hopefully answer some of those tips and trick questions for you. I do want to apologize beforehand. I do have somewhat of a cough, so I apologize if you hear that throughout this video, but again, just want to give the heads up. The great thing about armatures is that they are always going to be copper, uh, and they do come in different sizes. You can see a small one here. Here's a larger one, okay? And they do come in different forms. Some of your electronic and appliances will just have a metal cap that is magnetic. Underneath is your giant armature. Your copper bearing motors will have the windings around the motor. Inside the core, if you will, is your armature. And I have seen a lot of people say that they have now passed up on a lot of different uh, motors like vacuum cleaner motors because manufacturers have started to replace the copper windings on the outer shell of it with aluminum so if you scratch those windings and it reveals a metallic look underneath it is aluminum and in their opinion not worth the time to take in my opinion all of them are worth scrap value even if they are aluminum you're still going to get the um, I throw it into my tin so even this shell here I'm going to get tin price at 10 to 14 cents a pound in London Ontario um, so it's still better than nothing but your cores your armatures as I said are always copper and the nice thing about these is I can bring these into a scrapyard as is and get 39 cents a pound Canadian so with that experiment 11 pounds of that it works out to be four dollars and 29 cents from doing nothing but just taking these in. Uh, but again, gonna look at some of them. Uh, do I take all of them apart? No. And for this experiment, I did spend a lot of time taking some of them apart just to see different prices and stuff. So I have taken apart a small one like this just to kind of give you the size difference there you see. This one right here, I have separated it. There is the number two copper inside. Number two copper in London, Ontario is going for $4.40 a pound Canadian. It has actually dropped 20 cents from last week. So unfortunate there, but still a great price. Okay. And from this small one, I will not do these little ones again, but for the sake of this experiment, I did get three ounces from this, from the weight. Once I took it apart, surprisingly, I got uh, about eight or 0.8 of an ounce so almost an ounce there um so worked out to be about 23 cents a pound for that so you know 14 cents more it did take me a while it was kind of frustrating to do um so i do not take little ones apart like that um but again i did it for this experiment the other nice thing i do want to mention about these armatures is a lot of times once you open them they all have a type of crown, if you will. That crown does have a plastic cork on it, but it does have on the outer part copper. Inside, once you break that, a lot of them will have brass. So you can see there are two pieces of yellow brass there. So I do cut that off uh, and I will put that into my yellow brass. Uh, yellow brass right now is going for about $3.23 a pound. That too has dropped a little bit, but again, good price. Um, so there is sometimes brass on these armatures and or on these inner spoke if you will and some of these you can see they are very thick okay the shell here would be classified as tin this inner core could actually be classified as steel so the difference between tin and steel is actually the thickness of the metal if it was uh, thicker than a quarter inch it would be steel and steel is a couple cents more than tin so it does depend on your load. Some people, a lot of times, especially myself, I don't have much steel uh, and I am not going to separate it, drive around to a different pile to separate it that way. So I a lot of times throw it all in with my tin 
and get that price together. So again, that is your difference, the thickness. So these could be steel, but again, it does depend on your load, okay? But there is, as, or as I said, some brass on these ones. And I had about five of them that did have brass, okay? And again, the brass is located under that copper crown, okay? So it, to answer my question, which ones do I take apart? There are a few that I am going to look at, okay? The number one thing that I look at is, can I take this inner uh, arm out of this apparatus, the um, out of here? If I can use a hammer and it will slide out like this, it makes taking off or removing the copper so much easier. So that is the first thing I'm going to look at. The second thing I want to look at is also the grooves or the holes that I have the copper windings going through. Some of them you will have nice big thick ones like that, big holes like this. Some of them you'll see small little grooves like this. These ones are a lot harder to take out the copper, okay? There are definitely as well, the longer it is, it could be also more difficult. So look at the difference in tin there you have, okay? But the nice thing about this one, it does have large holes to it. So it does make it easier to open. Okay, so those are the first two things that I look at. Okay, this again was a nice one to open. Okay, so some of them, as mentioned, are difficult to remove this inner bar. Okay, I do have a couple set up that I have experiments with or gonna do an experiment on. Just gonna take this one. I'm gonna put it into my vise. Okay. And first thing I wanna do is just put on, I wanna make sure I put on safety glasses. Um, I do also want to make sure that I have on my table a couple things, especially when I get started with grinding. Uh, I want to make sure I have a shield. Uh, I want to make sure I have a mask. Uh, when I use a grinder with this, it does produce uh, somewhat of a smell. I actually had my daughter come in yesterday and she uh, took one whiff of the garage and said, Ew, that smells. What is that, copper? And I said, Well, it's a mixture of copper and something else. So. I do make sure I have a mask uh, when I did this, um, as well as a catch basin. You are gonna get a lot of copper and tin dust, so I did capture that as well here. Uh, but again, got this in my vise. Gonna put some safety glasses on. Gonna hit it with a hammer. Okay, sometimes the bigger the hammer, the easy it is. Now I'm just gonna actually just take a punch to uh, put it out the rest of the way. Okay, so again, some of them are easy to do. That one has gone through. As you can see, uh, the crown is still on there. So I do want to make sure I hit that off later because that is copper as well. A lot of people have asked about this little ring here. Is it brass? Is it copper? And the neat thing about these is if I scratch it, it does reveal underneath somewhat of a copper look to it, but they are kind of a weird material. I'm just gonna break one for you to show you. Okay, so inside of it, it's almost like a plastic. You can see right there, that little plastic piece. Try to fold, pull that up to the camera. Okay, with a small little coating of copper on it. Uh, I actually have a bin of these separate. I do not know what the scrapyard will do with this. It might be just a thin layer of copper on it. So I actually have a bag of these. I'm going to bring them to the scrapyard. If they give me number two price for them, awesome. If not, um, uh, they can figure out what to do with them or they'll just send me home with them. So stay tuned with that. I am going to the scrapyard uh, in a little bit, uh, in a couple days actually. So stay tuned to that. But uh, again, they do appear to be copper and sometimes brass, but once I open them, they almost look like, as I said, a cork um, with a copper layer on it. So again, it could be just a thin layer of copper, but I hold on to them for later. <laughs> but there is my uh, inner part to it. So this is gonna be weighed at the end with my tin. There is a little bit of brass you see right there. I will cut that off or slide it off. There it is. So some yellow brass rings. I have a bag over there, okay? Um, but that was the first thing. Uh, and now the nice thing about this is 
all I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cut one end of this and slide this off, okay? Um, when I do that, you can see there is actually a green rubber end to it, okay? Because this one has nice thick spokes, this is gonna be easy to open, especially once I just go right around the one way, because you can see some of the windings are already starting to slide off, okay? So I actually don't even have to cut this one if I really don't want to. This is actually pretty interesting how this is just sliding out. Look at that. Okay, so look at the size of that piece of number two copper on that. There are going to be different spools like that because I cut one of the ends to it. Okay, but look at that. It's just coming out. This does not always happen. So uh, this is <laughs> one of the first that does this for me. Uh, but again, look how easy that was. Okay, so that just shows you that there are a lot of different styles, okay? But I might not even actually use this one for this experiment because this is way too easy, okay? But look at that nice number two copper. And again, just to show you, scratching it, there it is. There's that copper look. So it's all going in this pile because this is part of that experiment, okay? I'm gonna focus actually on this one, okay? So here's a different model. And when I mentioned the green rubber, okay, if I cut this, so this was an example where the arm came out, but it is really thinned grooved. So what I had to make sure I did was I cut off one of the end, the crown end I popped off, and I did pop the other end off. So notice inside there is my copper, but unfortunately there is going to be a little bit of my plastic on there. If I don't pull this piece of plastic off or cut it off with a grinder, it makes it very difficult to get out this copper spoke. So you can see I went around this very easy to do and this is where that smell came in, but I was able to pop that off. There is still some of the plastic. Okay, the rest of this, that core, all I have to do is take a pair of pliers or side cutters, sorry, and just going to cut this, open it, uh, and actually that will separate this core, cut it. It's pretty thick, but okay, I might have to use a hammer for that, but it is glued on there. But that is going to be a little bit of plastic that I have to separate uh, from that number two copper. But as I said, you do want to make sure that I pull it off because if I don't, then it's going to make it a lot harder to get at those spokes to put a screwdriver through. Okay, so... Again, something like this. This one is very, very small. This one's a little bit bigger. I can fit a flathead screwdriver in here, okay? So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna put it into my vise. Okay, I'm gonna use, again, I have safety glasses on. Gonna hit this with a hammer, hit these spokes. Okay, gonna go all the way around, just like I would with a motor, okay? different size motors okay just turn it sometimes if I'm turning it it makes it so it doesn't move okay because if I go from one end it's going to move especially because it's circular but just going to continue hitting these spokes between these spokes knocking out the copper underneath okay so there it is now you can see these are my shells all I'm going to do now is just take a pair of pliers or side cutters and just slide this out Okay, so inside of there is my copper. And when I'm doing this, I always use a type of catch basin because there might be some small little copper that comes out of here, slides out, and I wanna make sure I can catch it. Okay, but you can see, just pulling out these little prongs of copper. Okay, and I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, there's a couple more. But they aren't hard to get out because the grooves are large. Okay, inside of there, if I peel that, you can see there is the copper. Okay, so all of this copper is gonna go into that bin, but that's what I will do for the rest of this spoke. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here for right now. Okay. Um, 
to answer a question about some of the smaller ones. If, for example, I'm showing you my screwdriver, I can't fit that into my grooves. It's very difficult to do. So, couple of options. Again, for me, do I want to take the time to get out all of that copper? Um, not really. It does take a lot of time. But for some people, I have heard that they will take all the copper they can. They will separate everything just like they strip all of their wire. So an easy way to do that is I have already removed the bottom with the plastic. I can't get at the uh, grooves to that with my screwdriver. But another method that I figured out was every one of these grooves does have, you can see, plastic inside of it. Okay, so that is what's holding that in, just like I showed you the cap on the bottom. And all I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a grinder down each of these grooves and cut that plastic. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now to show you some of them. Okay, you can see my copper windings are up right now. Okay, I've already popped them up. I took them off with a side cutter, just off of the glue. Some of them were glued to the crown there, if you will. There's my nice piece of brass again that I am going to get off. But what I'm going to do, as I said, take a side cutter or a pair of uh, uh, my uh, grinder, sorry. Just going to grind down these grooves. Okay, so again, this is where my mask comes in. Safety glasses. I'm not going to put a mask on for this part because I'm only doing a couple, but I did use a mask before. Okay, so. basin here or my bucket and now that I have cut down the sides here what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna grab my copper and I'm gonna slide it out that groove okay so there you go there it's coming out yeah you hear it dropping okay and it's not gonna work for all of it but you do have right there look at that see the copper coming out sliding out the side Okay, so you can get the copper out. It's just, in my opinion, as I said, time consuming. And when I factor out the weight to this, the grinding discs that I'm using, the smell, there's all different factors that I have to look into. Okay, so that's what I can do all the way down this once I pull it all out. Okay, but there is hopefully a method that is easy for people to see. Uh, and do if, you know, getting the screwdriver down there is not a possibility. Okay, so that is one way using a grinder. There is my copper. Okay, and I would obviously go all the way around this doing that method. Okay, so that is that. The last thing just to show someone. So for example, this one here, I am not going to take the opportunity or the time to open this. You can see the holes are very small. Something like this, I'm gonna leave, okay? But my first rule, as I mentioned, was if I can get this uh, pipe out or this arm out inner part, that's the first step, okay? Um, and then, as I said, this one, again, I do wanna make sure when I cut this, okay, if I can't get this arm out, I'm gonna cut it out here okay so then that way I can work around this copper I do also want to make sure that I cut off these connected off of the copper crown just to make it easier to pull down okay but hopefully that answered that question do I open all of them no I don't okay um, I will make sure that they are thicker arms like this okay the other thing I do want to mention is I have tried, there you can see a smaller experiment. I took a smaller one, I tried breaking it in half. Uh, and again, it wasn't worth my time because it was time consuming. It did eat up a grinding disc. 
okay? Um, so this is going to be metal. It's going to go into my tin. So I will factor that into the experiment. The other thing I do want to mention is I do have my catch basin when I'm grinding. It's like a shield. It will collect the copper dust. Uh, and there will be some of my table still. So there is right here my copper dust. And what I'm going to do to this is I'm actually to make sure that this is copper, because there is a little bit of debris in there as well as tin. I'm just going to use a magnet, run a magnet through it. Okay, so my magnet is going to obviously pick up the parts of tin. It does also pick up a couple coils of copper just because they're connected to some tin. But you can see right here, there is a lot of tin that I can pull out of that, or I am going to pull out of that to make this grinding dusk uh, number two copper without the metal or magnetic particles in there. Okay, so that is going to be added up into my experiment. Okay, so 11 pounds of armatures I have here. You can see, just gonna weigh it. I have to make sure I factor this experiment part in. Okay, that part to it. Um, I am not going to include this easy one. That was amazing, like I said, that I had this. Um, but it's not going to do it for all of them because I can't find the wire. Oh, yes, I can. There's another one. Look at that. This might actually just be therapeutic to just unravel like this without, you know, watching the, actually watching some of the NCAA tournament. I may just watch that like this. So that is incredible that I have this beautiful spoke <laughs> of copper okay so large large strands here but moment of truth gonna factor in the weight to this there is oh i gotta put it first of all sorry into pounds there we go so this is one pound 11.75 so one pound 12 ounces so a one and a three quarter pound of copper there Inside here is my dust. Let's see if I, okay, again, I'm gonna probably have to run a magnet through that again, but there is over 3.6 ounces of copper dust, dust from grinding through it. As I said, all of these are shells that you have now, gonna be 10, so three ounces more here. Okay, so uh, what did I say there? 1.12, so one, 15, so almost, you know, almost two pounds there because there's 16 ounces in a pound, so almost two pounds. Uh, my tin here, gonna weigh the tin right now. Okay, so here we go. The tin right now, I'm gonna classify it as number, or sorry, 10 cents a pound in Sarnia. It is 11, 14 pounds, or 14 cents a pound in uh, London. Okay, so I gotta make sure I get all my armatures here. I'm gonna put that in, that in, okay, all of these. And I have not factored in the weight of these crowns. So here is the crown broken, okay? I do wanna make sure I break those as well, but inside you can see there is rubber there. So I do break that open to get those little pieces of copper. So number two copper here, uh, there it is right there. Look at these little copper arms. So it all adds up for sure. Okay, but just gonna factor in the weight here. I have six and a half pounds, almost six pounds, 11 ounces worth of tin. So at 10 cents a pound there, you know, gonna get my 60 cents there. Um, so add that to my copper here. Was it worth it? Mm, I'm gonna say no um, with the little ones, especially this took me several hours to do for just an extra, you know, $5 in profit. So I do not do all of the little ones. The only ones I will do, as I mentioned, is the ones that have the nice large grooves to them, uh, as well, if I can easily hammer out the inner core to that to get to that copper. Okay, so hopefully that answered those questions. No, they are not all worth it, okay? But they are a great source of copper. And at 39 cents a pound as is, as copper bearing motor and armature price, I'm just gonna throw this in and get that money. So hopefully that answered those questions. A lot of different factors here that you have to take into consideration. Hopefully those um, 
um, uh, pieces of advice or tips or tricks that I showed you will help you. Uh, and again, it all depends on the viewer, the type of scrapper you are, and I think the availability. So hopefully that answered those questions. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.